Hey yo, if you ain't up on my bro Young Tef from Chosen Few Gang, you don't know LAZ, man. You heard? You don't know about the 10, 12 blazes we got together, videos we got together. Put in St. Laz Young Tef, you feel me? Go on Instagram, follow my bro Tef. He a monster, you heard? On that mic And he repped that jersey Get at him Hey yo LAZ man Make sure y'all join My new video game channel Brooklyn Arcade Where I'm playing Crack era games only You heard 80s early 90s games only You heard it's ugly in the building I'm playing all type of classics You ain't see And I got the arcade versions not the cheap home versions of a lot of games, you heard? So you need to check that. Story of Pottersville, trip to Miami, police was going, they was, you'll hear about you. it. Listen to the story. There's nobody out here but us and the trees. He like, if you was to disappear out here, nobody would even know. Then it dawned on me, my son pulling us over to arrest us. This is ready to body us. It's not a myth. Six and a half Avenue is an actual place. I'm going to talk about my bro, Wooden Soldier, right? Now, Wooden Soldier, we met Wooden Soldier through OZ. Um, OZ got his name because we used to be in a hood, no money, nothing to smoke, stressed out, like, damn, we don't got no dang son, word to mother. And this dude would always pop up with an ounce of weed out of nowhere. Yo, what up? Who want to smoke? Holding an ounce of weed in his hand all the time. He did that. So we said, yo, we're going to start just calling you OZ, my nigga. No, I said, yo, first, first we was like, yo, we're going to start calling you ounce, nigga. OZ for short, you heard? So we started calling that nigga OZ. OZ brought the nigga soldier around. At first, we ain't no soldier from a from a can of paint. We was rapping. We wasn't looking for no more rappers. He was bringing a nigga soldier around like, yo, this is my cousin. He spit his head off. You feel me? And son used to come around spitting, 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 spitting. And he spit so much that niggas started saying, all right, man, this nigga is team, man. Because he started getting better and better. And he would come around and we'd be just, he'll just break out in bars, start spitting crazy bars. We'd be like, yo, this nigga just won't quit. Like, and then them bars started getting crazy. And we say, yo, this nigga kind of spit. Like, we gonna have to make this nigga yeem. You heard? So we end up making a nigga Wooden Soldier team. You feel what I'm saying? Now his name, Wooden Soldier, son name was Woody. How he started getting called Wooden Soldier is cause you know, I'm just a silly dude with the slang. So if a dude got a name and his name is uh, Daru, I might call a nigga my nigga Daryl Strawberry was popping, my nigga. You feel me? I just do that with everybody name. You heard? So Woody, the only thing I could think of at the time was March of the Wooden Soldier. So I start calling that nigga. My nigga Wooden Soldier was popping. You heard? And that shit just stuck. And we started calling that nigga Wooden Soldier. You heard? So boom. Son ended up becoming one of the most purest, you know, realest niggas in the team. You feel what I'm saying? And it's crazy because the, the concept of the movie, March of the Wooden Soldiers, it, it, it kind of fits his name perfectly because, you know, Son is a real spiritual nigga, man. And he the type of friend that he, he ain't going to let you down if he your friend. You feel what I'm saying? Like the Wooden Soldiers didn't let the people down when it was time for war. You feel what I'm saying? He that type of dude. So, boom. So... You know, we we were smoking heavy weed, you feel what I'm saying? Spitting heavy bars all the time. Just doing this rap shit, my nigga. We doing this rap shit, we chilling, man. We staying out of shit. We ain't trying to get into no real trouble. You feel what I'm saying? We just trying to do music, you feel me? So one day, you know, my daughter's mother, my 14 year old's mother, she told me, yo, look, my best friend is about to get married. I gotta go down to her wedding. You need to come along with me and we do it. We make it a whole vacation. So I said, listen, I don't fly. I don't do, I don't do those birds in the sky. I don't mess with them. She like, well, if you could drive, if you could get a car to drive down there. We could drive down there. So I'm like, I'm gonna see what I could do. So at the time, one of my other chicks, she had a vehicle, you feel me? So I told her, yo, I need to hold that vehicle, man. We going down South. So she let me hold a vehicle, which at the time was a 
was uh what was it again i think it was a ford focus i think it was a ford focus that's what it was little ass ford focus right so she let me hold the vehicle we like yo we got to get downtown we got to get to miami really to fort lauderdale like my my daughter's mother had family in fort lauderdale that wasn't going to be there for a couple of months so they was going to let us stay in the crib you feel what I'm saying? So we ain't had to pay for no hotels, no nothing. We just had to get to the crib in Fort Lauderdale. Know what I mean? So none of us don't got no license. The only dude with the license was Soldier. So Soldier, like, yo, listen, man, you want to go down there? We go down there, man. I see you ready to drive. How far is that shit? At this time, bro, it was we ain't had no GPS. It wasn't none of that shit, bro. It was MapQuest. And MapQuest, bro, I feel I don't know what we was doing in this country before GPS's came out on phones and all of that because bro MapQuest was the worst you had to print that shit out staple that shit together take a whole stack of paper with you and hope you make it to your destination I don't know how people was traveling on the planet earth in the United States with cars without no form of GPS for decades and decades you feel what I'm saying that's crazy because I, I get lost with the GPS so imagine with nothing but we map quested like I right, boom. Now soldier, son, 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 none been around down south. I ain't no, I don't know down south like that. So son, like yo, I know how to get there. Now I mean straight down, motherfucking nine five. Now I mean whatever, whatever. We get, we'll get to Florida. So we like I right, boom, we bounce. Now it's me, him, my nigga Sid, N Y Sid that I told you about, and my baby mom. Now we all young. Now we all young. And we all like real family, like, you know what I mean? My baby mother, my niggas, we all family. Like, you know what I mean? We all, we be around each other all the time. We all was happy that we was taking a motherfucking road trip. And you know what I mean? Sid was coming along for the ride. Soldier was the license. You know what I mean? And me and my baby moms, you feel what I'm saying? So, boom. We head, we get on, we pack up and we get on the road and we head out there, my nigga. We start trying to drive. Now, when I drive places, I like to make very minimal stops. I like to get to where I'm going and just get there. But this shit, this drive was so long to Florida, bro. And then we going on on, on Labor Day weekend or whatever, we Memorial Day weekend, but we not going like the average person goes for Memorial Day f um, festivities and shit. We going for the wedding. So we not, oh, we not into all of that other shit, you feel me? So everybody is driving down south. You know, at this time, mad New Yorkers is on the road trying to get to Miami Beach. So we driving while we driving on the road. Niggas is pulling up on the side of us, throwing gang signs. Yo, fuck New York. Fuck y'all New York niggas. Word to everything I love. Every city and state we passed, it was niggas grilling us, honking their horn, throwing up the middle finger, throwing gang signs at us. I'm like, yo, it's really real. Like niggas really hate New Yorkers on that i-95 south you feel what i'm saying it was crazy so um it started getting late the first day we drove i'm like man listen we still a half a day away i said fuck that i said fuck that we going to a hotel we ain't trying to drive no more we had pulled in a, into a wrong block like we made a wrong turn or some shit and we pulled into a block nigga that shit was so pitch dark i was like nah we got to go to a hotel my nigga niggas ain't gonna lynch and kill me out here you heard? I don't know where we was at, Georgia. We was somewhere. I said, nah, bro, let's get our asses in a hotel. But we went to one of them little bullshit hotels that be dumb cheap, motels. We went up in there, we rolled up some herb. We was so annoyed when we was driving, like niggas had, we was on our jail shit. Like niggas had shit cheap. I even, I might've even had some shit boofed. Cause I was scared to death. I'm like, nigga, I'm not, I'm not getting nabbed up down south with no weed. So I had that shit. Oh, matter of fact, we had shit cheeked, and then I had a stash in the car that was kind of impossible to find. You feel what I'm saying? So we was doing it like that. So we was thirsty to smoke. We was trying to smoke in the car as fast as we can and get rid of the evidence in the smoke, so we don't get pulled over. You know what I'm saying? Four black. Three black motherfuckers and a Puerto Rican motherfucker in the car. You know, that wasn't looking good. So we pull, we go to the hotel, we burn it down for the night. You understand what I'm saying? We burn it down for the night. We get some motherfucking sleep. We get a couple of rooms or whatever. We get some motherfucking sleep. 
Next day we back on the road. You feel what I'm saying? And if I'm not mistaken, we ain't even make it all the way there on the second day. Cause we kept stopping and eating and smoking and bullshitting. You know, it ended up being a whole two day and a half trip before we actually pulled up in Miami, Florida. You feel what I'm saying? When we got there, we was like, yes, finally made it, man. We went to the motherfucking crib in Fort Lauderdale. Shit was laid out for us. Nice little apartment, little bedroom, living room. You understand what I'm saying, man? Listen, we was tired from that road trip. Niggas got comfy, my nigga. Niggas got real comfy. You heard? We went to Publix. We didn't know what the fuck Publix was. We went to Publix. We got a bunch of motherfucking groceries. We came back to the crib. We started fricasseeing shit up. You understand what I'm saying? Next day, nigga, it was time to explore. We three deep. My baby moms went to her fr to her best friend's crib to start preparing for the for the wedding and the parties and whatever the fuck they was doing for the wedding. You understand what I'm saying? We like, yo, we going exploring around Miami. So man, we hit Miami Beach Strip. We hit that shit for the first time. We like. Shit was different. First of all, we got there at nighttime. I think the first time we went there was nighttime. Nigga, that shit was different, nigga. Niggas was on the beach smoking crack. You heard? Niggas was on the beach fighting all type of shit. Like, we like, yo, I thought Miami Beach was laid back. Nah, not at nighttime, my nigga. Nighttime, that shit be having all type of fiends out there. You heard? Niggas be out there, be mad, dog. You can't see shit. Those sands is so white out that motherfucker. At nighttime, that should be looking scary. I'm going to keep it real. But um, we hung out on, on Miami Beach Strip, but we couldn't believe how hood that shit was. We like, nigga, this shit hood. Like, you heard? You know, every hotel, every restaurant be packed around Memorial Day. Niggas be out there. Be 10,000 New York niggas. Niggas from all over, bro. So check it. I forgot to mention being that we was going out there, we was on our music grind heavy. We loaded up. I had the CD burning machine in my crib. We had CD burners early. So boom, I had the CD burners in my crib. Before we left, I was fucking with the nigga WAP. We was putting out mad D-block mixtapes and all type of wild mixtapes. We, we, we loaded up a whole trunk load full of mixtapes. What we, would, what we was fucking with my nigga Strong. That's how strong is a whole nother story. We was fucking with my nigga Strong from, from LA and Boston, you feel me? And we was pressing up mad units. So we had mad units of mad mixtapes. And the hustle was at those days, we would make fake mixtapes up. Like we would make, we would, we would pretend to be a DJ. DJ such and such. Nigga don't even exist. We'll just be like DJ such and such. And we'll put out, we'll take, we'll steal songs from all of for, for other niggas mixtapes. We would take songs off of other niggas' mixtapes, make our own playlist, put our own music on that playlist, put a crazy ass cover on that shit, uh, and be like, DJ such and such, and just put that shit into the streets, my nigga. And niggas would think that shit is a real mixtape. And they'd be like, yo, Laz, I saw you got two joints on this new mixtape that's out. Oh, word, I gotta check that. Yeah, nigga, I put myself on that shit and put it in the streets. That's how we was getting down. Me, strong. You understand what I'm saying? Um, the nigga Watt, we was doing shit like that, but we was doing shit like, we was doing official shit too, cause we was fucking with DJ Radio. Nigga was fucking with DJ Radio, so we was doing official shit too, but we had all type of mixtapes. We had all type of mixtapes. So, we pressed up, we went out there with like, I don't want to exaggerate, but I, I think we went out there with at least... 400 mixtapes because a box of mixtapes holds 200 mixtapes so the same box that the 200 cases come in after you burn them shits it'd be a 200 pack so we went out there with two 200 packs 400 mixtapes maybe more i just don't want to exaggerate but i'm gonna say we went out there with 400 joints I'm going to say we went out there with, with 400 joints, right? So we went out there. We said, yo, we're going to get some of these mixtapes off. But we didn't go out there just to sell mixtapes. We just knew better than to go out to Miami without music. And we really was going out there to give them shits to people and spread our music around. But we didn't know in Miami at this time, this had to be like, 
This is early 2000s. This is early 2000s. So at this time, um, mixtapes was a heavy commodity everywhere else except for New York. New York, the market was so saturated with mixtapes that, you know, the feds ended up running down on that shit, shutting down the whole Canal Street with the mixtape market because niggas was actually getting millions of dollars off of mixtapes. So they shut that shit down in New York. But in other places, mixtapes was a heavy commodity. You feel what I'm saying? So when we was out there on Miami, on, on Miami Beach on Memorial Day weekend, niggas came out there with their own little mixtapes and shit. But those mixtapes get old when you just drove from New York all the way to Miami. Your mixtape is old. You tired of listening to that shit. So niggas was out there wanting other mixtapes. So once we found out, we parked, we parked, we parked up on Miami Beach Strip. And pop the trunk open And niggas just started coming over there Yo, what y'all niggas got? Niggas walking, we like, yo, we got the mixtapes Niggas like this, yo, what y'all got? We had three, four different mixtapes Niggas was coming over there like Oh, word, give me all four of these shits Niggas was coming over, we selling them shits Five cash, nigga Niggas was coming over there Copping four of them shits Yo, let me get all four of these right here Yo, I get, four, I get five for 20? Go ahead, my nigga You understand what I'm saying? Real talk Niggas was just killing these niggas. Son, the first box of them shits was gone quick. You heard? We like, damn, son, we can't. We played ourselves coming out here with only two fucking boxes, my nigga. We should have filled the whole trunk up with these shits. You feel what I'm saying? Son, we had two bullshit boxes. That first box, we got that whole shit off on Miami Strip. On Miami Beach Strip, niggas was coming over there. Yo, y'all niggas still the next day. Yo, y'all got more mixed here. Yo, we got the same joint, son. Niggas like, damn. I'm like, we was mad. We was like, son, we should have came out here with a variety of 10 tapes and packed the whole trunk. We would have got cakey. But we was selling them shits $5. We had about 400 CDs. So we quickly caked up. Like I said, this was early 2000s. We came out there with some money already, a little bit of money. But when we sold them shits, we was like, Damn, that first box, we was like, it's a fucking gold mine out here, my nigga. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we had DVDs too. We had DVDs too, if I'm not mistaken. You feel what I'm saying? So, boom. Any son, we eventually run out of weed, son. We there for a few days. We slinging those tapes. We got a pocket full of money. We don't need shit, but we run out of weed. Now, God damn, my nigga, you about to run me the fuck over. What the fuck is you doing? Yo, but it's like, yeah. Know what I mean? So we run out of weed. We all the way in fucking Miami. We run out of weed. We in Fort Lauderdale. We don't know nobody, son. Every day we driving from Fort Lauderdale to Miami. Just And then eventually Miami Beach became, we, we was tired of it. Be like, this shit's small. Like, what the fuck? It ain't nothing else to do. I'm like, let's go see this Collins shit that everybody talking about. I go to see Collins. That shit's small as a motherfucker, son. I'm like, son, this shit right here is it's good for a week. But then after a week, I'm getting restless, my nigga. I'm ready to go in the hood and see what the fuck is up in the hood. You feel what I'm saying? Son, we bugging out, son. We started going in wild ass Miami hoods looking for weed, nigga. Looking for niggas with weed. You heard? We, we running around trying to sell press niggas with mixtapes. Like, yo, we got the mixtape. Boom, boom. We got that D-block. We got that such and such. Son, we in Miami wild ass hoods. When I walked up to one nigga. I was like, yo, yo, I got the... That nigga was like, yo, get the fuck out my face. Nigga had the mad Miami accent. Nigga was like, yo, get the fuck out my face with that bullshit. I don't want none of that bullshit. I was like, damn, I wasn't in... I thought. <laughs> Yo, nigga told that nigga you wanna use the sidewalk. Unless you wanna go to the hospital, nigga. Use the motherfucking cross at the crosswalk, nigga. Yo, know what I mean? So like yeah, so boom. So um so yeah man, so we start going on wild ass hoods. One nigga, one nigga shitted on me, and I really felt like telling that nigga to suck some. But we was in the middle of a Miami hood, three New York niggas, and we stupid, son. We got on New York fitted hats, Air Max. I got on. I'm gonna find a picture of this shit. How I was looking out there, real ignorant and skinny. 
You heard? Slim Jim. You heard? That's when I was a Slim Jim. Son, I'm out there with my hat, my do-rag on, with my hat to the side, with the do-rag under it, with the Air Max on. With the Air Max on, with some loud-ass red sweatpants. I forgot what they was. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm just out there looking like a wild New York nigga. Sid looking the same way, Soldier looking the same way. We all looking like three wild New York niggas out of place. And we walking around the hoods in Miami trying to find a nigga who got weed. We bugging the fuck out, my nigga. We driving around, but we bugging the fuck out. That's before First 48 was out, pork and beans and all of that. Niggas getting murked and all of that. We ain't know nothing about that. We walking around Miami, about to get bodied, you heard? So eventually we find a nigga with some weed. Even that was reckless. We calling a nigga. I don't know how we got the number. We calling a nigga. He like, yeah, meet me at, meet me at McDonald's on such and such route 66. Da, da, da. We had to meet this nigga on the highway in a desolate parking lot. I'm like, yo, this nigga going to book us and murk us. You heard? We met the nigga, though. The nigga was official. He was like, what y'all New York boys out here doing, man? Da, 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 da. Where y'all ain't got no weed, man? Yo, man, it's that shit, man. Here, take this. We hit that nigga, we copped an ounce of that shit for like a buck, son. It was something cheap. I don't remember the exact price, but we copped like either an ounce or a half an ounce of that shit for like a buck. That's my word, bro. That's my word, nigga. Niggas got that shit, son. Niggas took that shit back to the rib. Niggas took that shit back to the rib in Fort Lauderdale. Niggas sparked that shit up. That shit had niggas twisted. You heard? That shit had niggas twisted. So we made up a motherfucking name, a nickname for that weed, nigga. We started calling that shit Slaw. Because it was some raw. And that shit had niggas moving slow, son. Niggas ain't want to do nothing, son. Niggas was like, yo, son, go, go, you know what I mean? Go. Go turn the stove off. Niggas like, nah, son, I can't do it, son. I'm slowed out. Straight up, we start calling that shit slaw, my nigga. Niggas like, yo, son, roll that slaw up, son. You heard? We was running out of that shit. We was hitting that nigga back. Yo, you still got that slaw? The same shit you got? All right, we coming. Anytime we needed some more weed, we go to Publix, nigga. We go drive up to Publix and, 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 and sit up in Publix, in front of Publix with the trunk open, and niggas will just come by, yo, what y'all got? Y'all from New York? Nigga be like, yo, y'all from New York? Like, yeah. Oh, y'all got them DVDs and the mixtapes? Give me them shits. Niggas was copping DVDs, mixtapes, left and right, son. We would sit there for a couple of minutes, make $100, and be out. Yo, we going to get that slaw. Niggas go get that slaw, nigga. We be twisted. We be twisted. That Miami, that Miami humidity, that shit different, son. I see why niggas in Florida walk around with motherfucking uh, flip-flops and tank tops on all day. I get it, bro. Because when you go out, you might as well stop buying clothes when you live in that motherfucker. That shit be so hot, you put your outfit on as soon as you step out the door, nigga, you dripping. That's it. Your outfit is ruined. It's soaking wet. You might as well just get a tank top and some motherfucking sweats and some flip-flops, my nigga. You might as well not even get fresh. It's too hot. It's too humid. Shit too tropical. After about a week, I was like, son, I can't take this heat no more, son. Nigga waking up. Eight in the morning, I'm going. Like, yo, I'm going to get a Dutch or a Swisher. They had Swishers out there. I said, Yo, I'm going to get a Swisher from the store, nigga. Fort Lauderdale, nigga. I walk outside, nigga. It's eight in the morning, nigga. It's a hundred cash. I'm like, Yo, I gotta get out of here. I start putting pressure on my baby moms. Yo, let me know when y'all ready to pack it up and go, bro. Because this heat, this shit different than New York heat, my nigga. This some tropical different shit. You feel what I'm saying? Shit like the motherfucker, I don't know, that shit like Cuba out there or something. But that shit was hot as a bitch. I couldn't take that shit no more. So, um, so yeah, right? So yeah, man. So yeah, we out there and shit, you feel what I'm saying? 
Now I mean, um, finally the wedding day come around. Now the wedding day, damn, I just saw a nigga. That nigga look exactly like fucking Larry David. You heard? But it's like, yo, so the wedding day come around, right? So now we got we supposed to. Now I mean, this broad is with her with her friend helping her prepare for her wedding. And she like, yo, now I mean, come make sure y'all here today at this time, dressed and ready to go, right? So we like, I right, bet we'll be there. You feel what I'm saying? Miami was bugged out, man. It was salamanders and lizards and all type of shit right running around the apartment complex. I had to get used to that. You heard? You, you just coming in your door. You just see a good lizard at the top by your door. Like, lizards just be on the wall and shit. Like, in Fort Lauderdale and all of that. Lizards, you come in your apartment building, there'll just be a lizard on your by your door. You just supposed to ignore it and go into your house. Like, that shit different. You feel what I'm saying? So, um... So yeah, that wedding day come. We supposed to meet meet my baby moms and everybody at the wedding at the at this on me at the place where the wedding is gonna be at and all of that, right? So we like, all right, bet we gonna be there. So we get up bright and early. We get dressed, know what I mean, shower up, get ready to go, get high. We smoke our shit, eat breakfast. We like, all right, we we about to head out there, nigga. We get in the whip, nigga. We get in the whip. We get slawed up. You heard? This is why you can't fuck with that slaw when you got shit to do. We get in the whip, we get slawed up. That's another strand. Shout out to my bro I was talking about. A, a wise man once a wise man hit me up the other day and said, Laz, you need your own strand of weed, my nigga. You need your own strand of weed that you need to be, be slinging. And I said, you know what? You're right. And I'm going to call that shit Slim Blunt Gang. You heard? So when I get, so when I get, so when, bugging out. So when I get that paper, when I get that paper, get ready for that Slim Blunt Gang strand that I'ma come out with. But um, yeah, this is why you can't be fucking with that slaw. So we get up in the whip and we start heading out. Now the spot was in Miramar. Right? The spot, the wedding was going to be in Miramar, if I'm not mistaken. So, I don't know shit about Florida. We don't know shit about Florida. You know what I mean? All we know how to do is go to Miami every day. And that's like a 30-minute drive or some shit like that. So, we get on the road, bro. We don't know how long that shit's supposed to be. I think the ride or whatever, I forgot. It may have, it may have been in Miramar or it may have not. You feel me? But... I know the ride was supposed to be a couple of hours, right? Phew. Matter of fact, it was supposed to be a few hours. Wherever we was coming from, it was supposed to be a few hours drive. You feel me? So we riding, my nigga. We riding. We smoking. We, ch we listening to music. We chilling. Nigga, we ride for two hours. Two long hours, maybe more, my nigga. I want to say three. I really want to say three. We ride for about, so let's just call it even on a two and a half. We driving for like two and a half hours, my nigga. I'm like, damn, we ain't get there yet. Like, it's a long ass fucking drive. Like, where we got to go? Like, I look at the nigga soldier. He the nigga driving, right? That nigga looking nervous, my nigga. I'm like, now I don't drive. Remember, GPS is not even popping. Niggas ain't got no GPSs on phones. Niggas got flip phones at this time. You heard? So I look over at the nigga soldier. He driving. Nigga looking nervous like this. I said, son, you... What's up, son? You all right? So I see this nigga... <laughs> He starts squinting. He driving and squinting and shit. I'm like, yo, son, why you keep squinting like that, son? That nigga like, I said, something wrong, man. Something is wrong. So this nigga, it's me, him, and Sid in the car. We've been driving for like two and a half hours. Wanna say three. I wanna say three. This nigga turns to niggas and says, son, 
I think I'm driving in the wrong direction. We said, huh? He said, son, I ain't want to say nothing, man, but you know, I think we going, I think we going north when we supposed to be going south. I said, son, we have been driving for like two and a half hours. I want to say three. I said, son, we've been driving for like two and a half hours, son. He said, I know, son, man, but I ain't noticed it till just now. I seen a sign. I was like, nah, this can't be the right way. I said, uh. I said, son, you drove. Son, we drove in the wrong direction for two and a half hours. I want to say, I want to say three. Son, come on, son. He like, yo, son, my fault. I fucked up. I said, this nigga, man, the lost soldier. You heard? We started calling that nigga the lost soldier. We like, son. How you gonna drive us for two and a half and not say nothing until we two and a half hours deep, son? Nigga was like, I said, nah, son. My baby mom's calling me, yo, where y'all at? Where y'all at? I'm like, yo, I got some bad news, man. This nigga, the lost soldier drove us in the wrong direction for hours my nigga now we gotta go back in the right direction and then drive to you that shit gonna take like four hours it's a wrap we missing the ceremony you heard so we missed the ceremony quiet is kept i'm not a big wedding fan so i wasn't that disappointed you feel what i'm saying but I was mad as a motherfucker that we was driving and had to drive for hours to get back to where we was really supposed to be. That shit had everybody tight. We was like, come on, my nigga, the lost soldier, my nigga. Come on, son. That nigga was tight. And anytime we bring that shit up, that nigga be mad. I'll be like, yo, son, the lost soldier, let's not forget. Let's not forget about that time. You drove niggas in the wrong direction for hours, son. But that's my son. I love the nigga. He's an honorable nigga. So check it, right? We we end up making it to the spot. We had a great time. You feel what I'm saying? Ate some good food. You understand what I'm saying? Chilled. And then it was time to head back to New York eventually. You feel what I'm saying? So... We pack up the car. We ready to go. At this time, I'm ready to go, my nigga. I mean, I, I'm missing New York. The food game was crazy. I went to motherfucking, to their little city area. I tried to get a slice of pizza. I ate that shit, nigga. That shit tasted like a motherfucking uh, board game. Like, that shit was cut out, cardboard cut out in a board game. That shit was so terrible. I said, yo, I got, I got to get the fuck up out of here. Nothing against you, Miami. I love you. But that pizza that I had over there by that bus stop Where the train station is at or whatever That shit was terrible, my nigga I should have reached out. No. That shit was terrible You feel what I'm saying? So um, I was ready to go, man So when we packed it up We on our way ready to go, right? We on our way We moving Now, like I told you You know We young and ignorant, my nigga So you know, we dressed like savage New Yorkers. We talking like savage New Yorkers. We smoking big blunts all over the place. Like we just like, it's legal everywhere. You feel me? Like savage New Yorkers. We just being savage New Yorkers. And we driving back and we're driving back to um, New York now, coming from down South, right? Pants sagging, do-rags hanging out the back pocket do rag strings hanging out the side of the pocket now i mean mad baggy 5x shit you feel what i'm saying we just was wilding out my nigga early 2000s vibes so we stopped in in georgia right if i'm not mistaken it was georgia we stopped in georgia on our way on our way home right 
my man, the nigga NYC, my nigga Citavelli, this nigga motherfucking goes up inside of a store, a convenience store. But bro, we are in a redneck back country road, some crazy way where they still lynch niggas. You heard? And we bugging, we stop at that shit. This nigga walks up in the store with his pants sagging down, with a do-rag on, with his hat to the side, you heard? Nigga like this, he come up in the store, this nigga like 18 years old, he come up in there mad New York down, he like, yo, hey yo, y'all got Dutchess in here? Them rednecks was like, niggas ain't say shit. He like, come on man, y'all don't hear me talking, I ask y'all niggas if y'all got Dutchess up in here, man. Fuck out of here, man, word up, man. Fuck out of here, man. Nigga walks out the store. He comes in the car. Nah, son, they don't got no duchess. But you didn't tell me that you went up in that motherfucker like, hey, yo, y'all niggas got duchess? Trap it. You ain't say you went in there like that, my nigga. You just came back and said, I ain't got no duchess. You ain't say that you pissed off the whole store off and you they was like, what the fuck is this New York motherfucker? Nigga came up in here like this. Hey, yo, y'all niggas got duchess up in here? Son, you can't do that, son. We in the back block. We in the motherfucking back block. You heard nigga like this? Nigga like this. Hey, yo, y'all niggas got duchess? Son, you can't do that, son. We in a redneck back block part of Georgia, like, you feel me? So, son, word to everything I love, son. We get on the road, son. Now, check it. We ran out of money, nigga. We start spending money recklessly, right? And then the CDs was gone. So now the CDs is gone. We ain't got no real money. We trying to smoke. We trying to eat. We trying to run around back and forth to Miami Beach. Money done dried the fuck up. So now we like, yo, we on our way back home. We trying to literally find a Western Union. Because I had one of my broads, if I'm not mistaken, Western Union me some money. So that we got money for the trip home. You feel what I'm saying? So... I'm like, yo, we got to find a Western Union, nigga. We in West Bubblefuck trying to find a Western Union. Son, we get on the road, son. We take the wrong motherfucking turn, nigga. Down a motherfucking uh, straight wooded area, my nigga. Straight forest, my nigga. No cars, no traffic. Straight forest with a street. That's it. Son, we get on that shit, son. I just see police behind us. I said, God damn, the motherfucking boys is behind us. Don't look back. It's all three of us and my baby moms in the car. Son, I'm like, these niggas gonna pull us over. Sure enough, the motherfucking sirens hit. Whoop, 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 whoop. I said, ah. Oh. Man, we got weed in the car. We in a fucking redneck part of Georgia somewhere. I'm like, oh man, son, them niggas pulled us over. Son, them niggas pulled us over, son. Them niggas was drug enforcement. They wasn't regular cops. They was drug enforcement. The shit said it on the side of the car. I said, what the fuck? Them niggas thought we was New York niggas moving them things. But what it really was is... My man went in that store disrespectfully and them niggas made a phone call to their cousin or something. Like, come teach these New York niggas a lesson. You feel what I'm saying? So them niggas pulled us over, son. Now check it. The nigga pulls us over on a fucking desolate wooden road, son. I mean, a desolate road with nothing but trees, son. And he's like this. He comes up to the car. He was like, um... I want y'all to step out the car. The nigga made us all step out the car. Nigga say, yo, where you coming from? I said, we coming from Florida, man. We just came from a wedding. He said, I'm gonna need y'all to step out the car. Now, you know all this shit is violation of niggas' constitutional rights and shit. But niggas is nervous because we, we we out of town. So he like, yo, I need y'all to step out the car. So I'm like, should I beef with this nigga or should I just comply? Because we don't really got nothing to hide but a little bit of weed. We ain't got no drugs and no shit like that. So I'm not really that worried. So the nigga has us step out the car, my nigga. Son, the nigga finds a roach. The nigga finds a roach that was under my boot or some shit like that. That was on the mat of the car. And nigga said, what's this right here? I said, huh? 
He said, what is this right here? Shit was like this. Shit was like half of this size, real talk. He said, what is this? What is this shit? I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. He said, this is not yours? I said, nah, it ain't mine. I don't know. He said, whose is it? I don't know. It's nobody's. It was like, so, yo, I said, I could. I was walking around the street. I could have stepped on that shit, boarded in the car. I don't know. He said, I don't want to hear that, man. He said, y'all was in here smoking weed. I could smell it. He said, um, so like, listen now, I'm not noticing that I'm not really taking notice to where we are at at the time. I'm just thinking we pulled over whatever. Nigga, we in a fucking middle of the woods some motherfucking way, right? So this nigga says, he said, look, let me tell you something. He said, this is not New York City. He said, somebody got to go to jail for this shit. Nigga had a roach this size, my nigga, half of this. Nigga said, somebody got to go to jail for this. So I said, somebody got to go to jail. I said, what, what you talking about? I said, that's a roach. You understand what I'm saying? He said, yeah, this is not New York. He said, the laws ain't the same as New York. He said, for, for any type of weed in your car in this state, you could get a year in jail. He said, and somebody is going to have to take, uh, somebody's going to have to take the weight for this right here. So now we all standing there looking at each other. Niggas is quiet. I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking about just going through the system. I'm like, damn, I'm about to go through the system in a rural town in, in Georgia. What the fuck is going to happen to me? So we all looking at each other. I'm like, this is some bullshit, man. So then the nigga stepped it up a notch. He said, yo, look around you. So I looked around. He said, like, listen. Nobody knows you pulled over right now. As he said, look around you. There's nobody out here but us and the trees. He like, if you was to disappear out here, nobody would even know. Then it dawned on me, my nigga. This nigga wasn't pulling us over to arrest us. This nigga was ready to body us, my nigga. On some G shit, my nigga. He really thought we was New York drug dealers passing through his town trying to sell motherfucking whatever we trying to sell. This nigga was like, ain't nothing out here but us and the trees. And he said, look behind you. When I look behind me, the, his partner was pulling up. And he said, you see that? You see, you see that car? He said, that's my partner. He's waiting for me to tell him what he what, what I want to do out here. You feel what I'm saying? So we look, we just all quiet, my nigga. He's by himself, white nigga. Nigga look like the nigga um Flanders from 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 the Simpsons. Look just like that nigga, son. Spitting image of him. You feel me? The nigga like this. Look, the nigga looking at us, looking at us up and down. He like after he said that is nothing but the trees around shit. I just got quiet because I'm like, yo, this nigga could be a murderer. This nigga, I said, yo, in my head, I start thinking like, is this nigga really? gonna murder us like i mean like how many niggas did they do that to over the course of a hundred years like how many niggas got pulled over on this desolate road right here they waited for us to go down the desolate road we didn't know no better we went down the desolate road niggas pulled us right over my nigga nigga told us ain't nothing out here but us in the trees if you was to disappear won't nobody know about it i said yo I said, yo, I decided to start talking. I said, yo, officer, this is this is all facts, my nigga. This game got us out the situation. I said, yo, this game was serious. I decided, I said, either I'm going to be quiet and, and wait this shit out and see what plays out, or I'm going I'm to I'm try to game this nigga and game ourselves out the situation. So the nigga starts throwing pressure on niggas with the roach again. He like, somebody has to claim this and somebody has to go in right now and go in through the system so who's it gonna be we like this the nigga soldier like take me man take me let my let my let my mans go so i said son don't do that son i said nah don't do that he said son fuck that son i got family down south son don't worry about it i can't let y'all niggas get locked up out here son now i mean i got family all through the south son he said, yo, take me in. So the nigga take his cuffs off. He start getting ready to cuff the nigga soldier up. I said, yo, yo, I just decided to not hold my head and speak. I said, yo, officer, real talk. This is exactly what I told that nigga. I said, yo, officer, real talk. I said, that's some real racist shit you doing. 
I said, that's some real racist shit. I said, you see, you see a car full of minorities and you automatically assume that we out here committing some type of crime, that we out here breaking the law and selling drugs and moving drugs to your town. I said, we came out here for a wedding and all you got to do is pop the trunk and look at the, look in the back of the trunk and you're going to see a tuxedo. You're going to see a couple of tuxedos and a wedding dress. You know, and, a, and, a, and a bridesmaid dress or some shit like that. Whatever had, whatever dress my baby moms had with her in that car. I said, you look. I said, you pop that trunk. You gonna see a tuxedo and you gonna see clothes and attire for a wedding. I said, you been on this job for how long? He said, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been on this job for 20. I said, and in 20 years, you mean to tell me you don't know? When somebody's really a drug dealer or not, you can't tell when people are coming out here for vacation and for th and to see family from niggas who's coming out here to move bricks and coke and shit like that. I said, you've been on the job that long and you can't sniff that out in us that we ain't doing shit. I said, let me tell you something. That little roach you got in your hand. I said in New York, I said, if you bought that shit in front of a judge in New York, you might lose your job. I said, I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. I said, where I'm from, police pulling you over, them niggas looking for machine guns, nigga. If you ain't got a machine gun, they don't give a fuck about you. I said, it's real where I come from. Word to everything I love, my nigga. This nigga said, I know about New York cops. I know how it is in New York. I see it on TV. I know, I know how those guys' jobs are. They're real cops out there. I said, yeah, they're real cops. And if they seen you, Bringing me into a precinct for some shit like this, they will fucking laugh at you and call you a toy cop and a fake cop because in the streets that they work, shit too serious. I said, them niggas will give me my weed, my crack and everything else. They looking for machine guns, nigga. I said, so you do whatever you want to do, but I'm letting you know you a joke. I said, you a joke with that shit. I said, you doing some racist shit. You doing this shit to us. You see, we here with a woman. We here with a woman and you scaring us up and doing all of that shit. I said, that's some coward shit. I said, now you're going to take my friend to jail? I said, man, all I'm letting you know is to a New York cop, you're a joke. Son, I told that nigga that shit, son. That nigga said, like, that nigga ego just was like, I know how New York cops are. He was like, I know I'm New York cop. I know how it, I could survive out there if I was a New York cop. Like his ego just took over the whole shit, bro. And I said my piece and I just got quiet. Whatever, man. You understand what I'm saying? And you know what that nigga did? He looked at us and he said, I'm gonna tell you what y'all gonna do. I thought he was gonna be saying, I thought he was gonna say, turn around, put your hands behind your back. He said, I'm gonna tell you what y'all gonna do. He said, you're gonna get in this car you're gonna go down straight, you're gonna make a right, and you're gonna go down one mile, and you're gonna go to that Western Union, and you're gonna find the Western Union that y'all was looking for. I forgot to mention that. I had told a nigga we was looking for a Western Union. That's why we stopped. And he said something about that store. He said, Did when he, he said, Did one of y'all go into a store a few a few miles back? And we was like, yeah, yeah, why, what's up? He said, when you come into a store out here, you're an out-of-towner. He said, when you come into an establishment in my town, you better come in there respectful. And that's when I knew them niggas is the niggas who called them. You feel what I'm saying? But we had told a nigga, yo, we looking for a Western Union. We looking for a Western Union. So right when I thought that nigga was going to say, turn around, stand, sit in the car, wait for my backup to come, we taking you out of jail, that nigga was like, Y'all gonna go down this way, y'all gonna turn left, y'all gonna go a mile, and you're gonna see a Western Union right there. Yo, my nigga, I thank that nigga, bro. I say, yo, man, I appreciate you. Know what I mean, I appreciate you. He was like, yo, it was a misunderstanding. He said, but when you come through these towns, don't come here with your pants sagging and your hat to the side and disrespecting with your, with your language and none of that. You feel me? I said, all right, officer. I said, all right. And that nigga let us go, my nigga. When that nigga walked, when that nigga drove off, son, niggas just all breathed a sigh of relief like, Phew. I said, this nigga soldier was about to take the rap and get locked up out of state and let us go home, man. I said, this nigga's a real motherfucker. 
You feel what I'm saying? When my nigga Sid got clapped, which I'll talk about later on in the, in, in the story, when my nigga Sid got shot up, that nigga, you know, shots was firing, so niggas was scattering and running. But that nigga came back, threw that nigga Sid on his back while he was shot up, threw that nigga Sid on his back and brought that nigga upstairs to my crib on his back. You feel what I'm saying? That's, that's why we call that nigga soldier. You heard? It's deeper than busting guns and being a thug in the street. It's about being a real friend. You feel what I'm saying? And that's what that nigga is, bro. You heard? And we made it back to New York and we was happy as a motherfucker to get back to New York. And I said, I would never, ever, ever drive down south all the way to Florida again, my nigga. Never in a million years. I'm Gucci. I stay my ass in New York. Send pictures. Let me know how it was. You heard? Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. You heard? This is the story of Pottersville. It's a saga. So bear with me. Hey, yo, LAZ, man. If you make music out there and you need official organic music promotion, holla at me. I promote you on this YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel. And my Instagram. Go check my reels. They on fire. LAZ. I'm in Throg's Neck right now. You heard? In the Bronx. I used to live over here once upon a time. And I got a crazy story that basically took place while I was living in this neighborhood. This story is part of the story of Pottersfield, but it's a whole story in itself and it's called the car accident. We was going through a lot of nonsense indictment, a lot of silly stuff. You heard it was gunplay involved, there was fights, it was, it was a lot of detrimental things going on. And it got to a point where uh, one day we found ourselves kind of ready to throw it all away. Me and the bro OP, we was just out early in the morning plotting. And basically, bro, we was this close to throwing everything away. You heard? And I got like an epiphany. And that epiphany said, nigga, you just came home from doing six pieces not too long ago. Do you feel like going back up north for another 20 or 25? Because that's what the fuck is about to happen to you if you keep doing what the fuck you've been doing. You heard? We had allowed ourselves to get sucked into petty hood shit. You feel what I'm saying? And it was spinning out of control and it was only a matter of time before somebody went to jail for something serious. You heard? Or somebody lost their life, period. So one day I was a couple of blocks out the peas and I said to myself, yo, man, you know, I'm getting sucked up in this project life and I'm getting caught up in what goes on in this housing project. I said, but when I'm two blocks away from the projects, I don't see nobody that's from the projects. That's how much a, a, a microcosm those projects be. Like you be beefing and going to war and shooting and, and, and you be shooting and going all crazy in your projects when three blocks away, bro, Nobody cares about what's going on in that project. And if you go three blocks away from that project, you might not ever see half of them niggas ever again for the rest of your life in that project. You feel me? But they can suck you in and have you believe in that the projects is the world. You feel me? So while being three or four blocks away from the projects one day, I said, yo, I gotta get the fuck out of here, bro. Why am I still here? Like, I got to get the fuck out this project before this project really takes my freedom away and tricks me out of my freedom. You feel what I'm saying? So I told my baby moms, I said, yo, look, man, I got to get the fuck out this project or somebody going to lose their life and it just may be me. You feel what I'm saying? Or somebody going to go to the can for a long period of time and it just may be me. You heard? So I got to get the fuck up out of here. So if... You, you know, my baby moms was the type, she was working, 
You understand what I'm saying? My Jamaican baby mother. My Jamaican baby moms, you feel what I'm saying? She was working and had her shit together, her credit together, and all of that good shit together. And of course, at this time, apartments in New York City wasn't motherfucking uh, $5,000 a month. So I told her, I said, yo, look, man, I got to get out these peas, man. Enough is enough. You heard, like, this shit's is sucking me in, and I'm starting to lose focus. Because, you know, we was doing the music at the time, my nigga. We was doing music, we was going hard with the music, and then bullshit in the hood started spawning off, you feel me? And niggas was forgetting about the music. I said, yo, I need you to I need you to make moves to get a crib, man, so I could get the fuck up out of here and I ain't got to be here. You understand what I'm saying? And I could come in and out this bitch the way I want to without niggas knowing where I rest my head or knowing where I'm resting my head at. You heard? So my baby moms made moves. She like, all right, I'm gonna get on it. Within days, Within days, she was calling me like, yo, I found a little spot. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's a little basement apartment in Throg's Neck. I said, listen, man, I don't give a fuck what it is. It could be an attic in motherfucking, it could be an attic in Castle Hill, a, a basement in Throg's Neck. I don't care where it's at. Long as it's not where I'm at right now because it's getting hot and heavy out here. You feel what I'm saying? And you know, I'm living with my moms. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm putting my moms in danger and all type of shit. You feel me? Get my moms in danger, getting my moms kicked out of the projects and all type of shit. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I learned valuable lessons from that beefing in the hood shit. You can't shit where you lay, bro. You can't shit where you lay. You can't start drama and beef and problems where you rest your head because your moms gotta come in and out that motherfucking building. You heard? We beefing with all types. We we beefing with all type of niggas in the hood. My mom's coming back and forth from work. She don't even know what the fuck is going on. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, I gotta get the fuck out of here, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Cause I'm starting to bring beef to the doorstep. Know what I mean? And um, yeah. So she hit me up and said, Joe, I got that little apartment in Drogs and that. Say no more. We was out of there. Know what I mean? The nigga OP. He was in, in, in the middle of the beef with me. I said, nigga, you coming with me. You feel what I'm saying? So he came with me and he was living with me in the apartment in um, Throg's Neck. So the nigga OP, OP was more entangled in the beef than me. You feel what I'm saying? So I told that nigga, yo, come with me. And he came to live with me in Throg's Neck. You feel what I'm saying? So now we chilling, we both laying low. We in the neck, pause. You feel me? We in the neck, we chilling. Where we at? We right across the street, right across the highway from the projects. You feel what I'm saying? We right across the highway from the projects. I'm gonna show you where we was at. But um, we happy, nigga. We out the hood. We could pop up in and out the hood anytime we want to. Not I mean, and then go and leave at night and don't have to be out there. You feel what I'm saying? Crazy shit. I remember one day we was in Prague's neck for a minute and then you know from, I, I got stories about Castle Hill too because we ended up moving to Castle Hill but we in motherfucking drugs Nick. I remember one time we went to the projects we went to the P's and I'm trying to let my, my memory serve me correctly we went to the P's it's my word we went to the P's out in Dykeman me and the nigga OP as soon as we came downstairs just to go to the store police ran down on us bro we ain't been in the hood in a month we coming back out there for the first time now. We not out there. So now niggas is more dangerous. You feel what I'm saying? So we come to the hood. I'm like, yo, I can feel, I can feel the heat outside. This is when cops were still running down on niggas and searching niggas. Niggas, soon as we went outside, police pulled up on us, <clears throat> hopped out. Yo, get up against the gate. We like, what the fuck is going on? Niggas search us. Yo, we got a call that you was walking around with a gun. That y'all was walking. No, niggas said, yo, we got a call that you was in the building lobby with a gun. I'm like, damn, my nigga. But I knew what that was. That was uh, enemies or friends of enemies making sure that we wasn't out there with ratchets about to do nothing. You feel me? Don't ever get it fucked up. When you got beef with niggas sometimes, niggas will use the police to make sure you ain't roaming around with that ratty. You feel what I'm saying? And that's what that was about. Because the police said, yo, niggas called us and said, y'all had a gun out in the building lobby. 
We ain't had no motherfucking gun in the building lobby. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't pulled nothing out. I'm not sure. We may have pulled some shit out. I don't remember. You feel what I'm saying? But either way, we ain't have it on us when the police ran down on us, luckily. You heard? But it was that type of party where we couldn't be roaming around without no ratty. You feel what I'm saying? We couldn't be roaming around the hood without no ratty. So boom, I'm on Randall Avenue right now. The projects is right across the street, right across the highway. You feel me? Bus stop to the mid, the Midtown bus used to come from Midtown all the way right here. It was the greatest. I used to be all the way in Midtown and just pop out on this bus stop and be across the street from my crib. It was the greatest. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, man. So, um, so I'm living in Throg's Neck, man. You know, this story is, it's stories within this story. So I'm living in Throg's Neck, right? Now, at the time, my baby mother is pregnant. She's pregnant with my child. You heard? We starting the beef. We in this small ass little basement apartment. It wasn't cool. We were starting the beef, you feel me? And me keeping it all the way real, I was at the age where I was still fucking with a hundred different chicks. You heard when she got pregnant with me, I was fucking with a bunch of chicks and I really wasn't on no ready to settle down type shit. You feel me? And I was playing a lot of games and you know, I was just doing me like period. This is where we was at right here, that second building. The second brick building right here in the basement. You feel me? So me and her started beefing. Some funny shit happened one day. Like, you know, when a chick be pregnant, she be hormonal. So we was beefing, beefing, beefing. She just snapped and just snuffed my shit. You heard? My baby mom's mad, short, Jamaican, school teacher. She ain't with none of that violent shit. But when a, when a woman is pregnant, her hormones be out of control. So we was beefing, beefing. She just punched me in my nose. Boop! I just grabbed her shit up. You heard? If you, if you let her tell it, I was Ivan the Terrible, but she punched me in my face. Boom! Bust my whole shit. You feel what I'm saying? But that shit was dumb funny. But anyway, you know, my wife now was one of the women that I was dealing with. You feel what I'm saying? And she had a whip. And at this time, you know, I ain't even know how to drive. So somebody having a whip was a special type of occurrence. You feel what I'm saying? So she had the Cherokee. So I was already messing with her for years. <clears throat> even before my, my baby mother got pregnant, I was messing with her for years. You feel what I'm saying? But um, yeah, she had the whip. So she used to come up top to check me. Now, my baby mom's is pregnant. She went to go start staying with her mother. You know, she about to have a baby. She want to be around her moms and her family. And she don't really want to be in this bum-ass basement apartment. This basement apartment was so toe up, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it was the ceilings were so short. I hit my head on a beam on that ceiling at least five times out the week, bro. I'm 6'3". It was rough living in that basement apartment. I forget about it. I'll be like, yeah, I'm about to go get something to drink. Boom. Oh, the fuck? You heard? That was five times a day in that basement apartment. So, um... She ain't really want to stay there either. She go back to stay with her moms. Who, they was in a nice, good house. You know what I mean? Over there on East Chester. Right? So, my wife, like I said, she had the whip. And I used, it used to be this Jamaican restaurant. Right? One is still there, one is not. Called Vegan Delight. That's on Boston Road, right? Great restaurant. They sell the great patties. But right next door to it used to be another Jamaican spot. And they used to sell some vegetarian like uh gumbo that was delicious it just had like veggie fish chicken beef it was just crazy and it was made by the, a crazy jamaican restaurant with rice and peas and cabbage and it was so crazy it was a stew it was a vegetarian meat stew and it was so crazy that my wife used to be calling me from brooklyn like yo i need some of that stew i'm coming all the way up to the bronx take me to the spot you feel me? So this one particular day, she comes up. I'm like, I, I need some of that stew in my life too. You heard because it was like $10, $12 for the large order. And bro, you they gave you so much food, plantains, coleslaw, rice and peas, vegetarian stew. Shit was crazy. You heard? So 
we go over there to go find the spot, the spot closed, we tight. We like, damn, man, I wanted some of that stew. So it's me, OP, and my wife. You feel what I'm saying? We in the Cherokee. We driving, we go to the spot, they not open. We driving around. We on East Chester Road. We like, damn, what we gonna go get to eat now? This shit fucked up the game. What we gonna go get to eat? So, bruh, she driving. My, my wife is driving. She did some shit and I was like, yo, be careful, boom, 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 because it's a tricky street where you be in a turning lane but the lane right across from it is an oncoming traffic lane. And if you're not paying attention, one or the other, the people in the oncoming lane or you turning could do something drastically wrong, not paying attention. I don't know who was in fault completely, but I do know this. She did some shit and I was like, yo, chill, be easy over here. And all I can remember is her saying, don't worry about it. We ain't gonna get into no accident. And soon before she was able to finish the word accident, it was like a motherfucking missile from a tank hit our car. That shit said, boom. And we started spinning around in circles like this. Bruh, I, I thought we was never gonna stop spinning. When we finally stopped spinning, I checked myself to see if I was alive. I looked over to my wife to see if she was alive. And I looked back in the back seat. My man, OP, was laying down in the back seat without a seat belt on. I turned, I said, yo, y'all all right? Everybody all right? It was smoke. Like, you, were, I was smelling smoke and, and shit was dizzy, bro. We spun around so much, we was dizzy. I was like, yo, y'all all right? Everybody all right? And both of them was like, yeah, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right. Bro, when I say that shit was like a missile, that shit said, she was like, don't worry, I'm not going to get into an axe of boom. Bro, when I, I got out the car, because we hit somebody, so I got out the car to see if they was all right. I gets out the car. I look. I see the other car completely totaled. This is why I will always respect Cherokees. Them shits is tanks. You heard? Our car, we was totaled too, but the car that hit us, they shit was twisted. Like half they motherfucking front of the car was gone. And that shit was splurting out all type of motherfucking antifreeze. And at this time, I ain't know shit about cars. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't know what's flammable, what's not flammable, or none of that. I hop out the car to go see if he all right. I just see a dude look like a white heavy set dude. He like, uh, he like, uh, uh, where's my fucking wallet? Where's my fucking wallet? So I'm like, I'm like, yo, hold on. We just had a high speed. We just had a crazy collision. And this nigga talking about where's his wallet? This nigga drunk. I go over there. I'm like, yo, you, I almost just got hit by a fucking car just now. You heard? But I go over there. I'm like, yo, you, I? He like, oh, get the fuck away from my wallet. Get the fuck away from my wallet. So I'm like, ah, oh, this nigga drunk. Like I said, uh, antifreeze and chemicals and all of that was splurting around. I was going to run over there to help the nigga, but them chemicals was splurting too much. I was like, just my luck. I go over there trying to help the nigga and the whole shit just blow up. So I'm like, this nigga drunk. This nigga took him out. Get the fuck away from. He started saying shit like, get the fuck away from my wallet. Get the fuck away from my wallet. You heard? I'm like, yeah, I'm leaving this nigga the fuck alone, man. You heard? I called 911. Yo, listen, we just got into an accident on such and such road and such and such. We was over there on East Chester Road and something. You heard? Like, by Gun Hill and East Chester Road. I'm like, yo, we just got into a bad accident. We got a dude out here. He might be hurt. We need some help. He like, is anybody else hurt? I'm like, nah, we good. At the time, I thought we was good. I ain't know we was hurt. 
I ain't know I was hurt. But I was sadly mistaken. Police pull up on the scene. That's my word to everything I love. I heard one of them niggas say, oh, that's Eddie's brother. Or whoever's brother it was. It was like, oh, that's Eddie's brother. You heard? My nigga, they cleaned that motherfucking scene up so quick, my nigga. It was a wrap. You heard they got that nigga off the scene so that he wouldn't be questioned by police. You feel what I'm saying? Shit was happening so fast, I didn't really know what was going on. I was just happy my ass was alive and everybody in the car with me was alive. You feel what I'm saying? So I wasn't really asking too much questions and I knew that that dude was drunk. I wasn't trying to ask too much questions because my ass was just happy that I was alive after we spun around like five times. You feel what I'm saying? And happy that everybody in the car with me was alive. So I was being, I was feeling grateful. And um, I knew the dude was drunk and shit. When the police came, I ain't say nothing about that. Like, yo, the dude was drunk and this and that, this and that. And I knew that he was either police or related to police. Either way, I ain't say shit when the police came. I'm like, yo, I don't know. They took him to the hospital, boom, boom, boom. You feel what I'm saying? So, bro, they towed our car away and we was out there with no car. My wife had to get all the way back to Brooklyn. You feel what I'm saying? I think we had money on us and I sent her in a cab or some shit, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I sent her in a cab and she went home. And um, I went back home to Throg's Neck to this basement ass apartment with my Jamaican baby mother. But like I said, at the time, she was mostly staying with her mom. She would come over for a couple of nights out the week to stay with me. But you know, she was nine months, eight months pregnant. So she wanted to be around family. You feel what I'm saying? And like I said, she ain't want to be in that bum ass basement apartment. But, um, oh yeah, that's right. Cause the basement apartment had caught a mouse infestation. That shit caught a mouse. Mice started coming in from outside until it was ridiculous. And them niggas was, sh uh, and it got to a point where it wasn't healthy for her to stay there no more. So that was the real reason why she was really not there most of the time. She would come through, check me or whatever. But at nighttime, she was out of there because she wasn't trying to breathe in that mouse shit. You feel what I'm saying? So I went back to the basement apartment and she was there one night. And... You know, I kept it real with her. I said, yo, look, first of all, I ain't feel no symptoms. I ain't say shit about the accident that night because I ain't want her to know I'm riding around with another broad. You feel me? And cause, pr and cause problems in the crib while she pregnant and stress while she pregnant. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I kept that shit to myself for 10 days. Then after 10 days... All type of symptoms started coming, nigga. I couldn't fucking walk. My back was crazy. My motherfucking neck was stiffed up. Bro, all of them symptoms came in 10 days later. And the reason why is it takes 10 days for your spinal column to swell up to the max after an accident. So once your spinal column Whatever part of vertebrae on your spinal column, it has been injured and that shit start to swell up. It starts laying on the nerves because your nerves is intertwined all in your spine. So after those 10 days when your spine actually gets to swelling up, that shit be smashing your nerves like this and causing all type of crazy feelings and symptoms. Bro, my shit was so fucked up. I'm like this, what the fuck? I had to tell my baby mom just cause I thought I was going to die, my nigga. The type of shit I was feeling, I was having a mad irregular heartbeat, heart palpitations to the max. I was having a crazy irregular heartbeat. My shit was crazy, bro. I was panicking. I was panicking. I'm like, I gotta tell this broad in case I die, she could know what the fuck I died from. I said, yo, look, I was in a bad car accident the other day. I was with this chick, boom, 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 boom. She was tight. I'm like, listen, I'm telling you, I'm about to motherfucking die. And she tight about some chick. I'm like, listen, man, I'ma tell you, I'ma keep it real with y'all. When I'm injured or motherfucking sick, I'm a miserable motherfucker, my nigga. I be complaining when I'm sick and hurt 
everybody gonna feel sick and hurt that's in the house with me, my nigga. My daughter is the same way, my 11 year old. When she's sick, everybody gotta feel it. And that's how I am, you heard so. I'm just fucking stressed out. She, she mad at me over the chick. I'm like, nigga, I'm about to die. You heard? I feel like I'm about to fucking die. You worried about some chick. She on some shit like, yeah, whatever, nigga, good, die. You was with another chick, go ahead and die. You feel what I'm saying? So, nah, she wasn't really thinking like that. Yeah, man, so, yo, these symptoms start hitting me like a ton of bricks, bro. I mean, one night, this shit just woke me up out my sleep. My heart was beating so irregular, it just woke me up out my sleep. I'm like, yo, I can't take this shit no more, man. This, my motherfucking heart is gonna stop. I ain't know what to do. I was Googling all type of shit. Yo, bro, I wake the nigga OP up. That nigga sleep in the living room. I'm like, yo, son, yo, son. I'm like, oh, he's sleeping in the next room because we had two bedrooms. We had, we had two bedrooms in that shit, two small ass bedrooms. So I'm like, yo, son, yo, son. He woke up, yo, yo, what happened? I say, yo, son, man, I'm just waking you up to let you know, my nigga, that I'm feeling all type of crazy shit right now and I don't wanna die in my sleep and you not know nothing about it. So I'm just letting you know, my nigga, my shit is going crazy. My heartbeat is irregular. My shit is, I'm feeling like I'm about to fucking pass out and die, my nigga. My shit's so fucked up. Me and this nigga, I'm holding this nigga hand. Yo, son, hold my hand, son. I'm like, yo, son, yo, son, if I die, son, I love you, my nigga. We put some good music out together. You my nigga, you feel me? He like, yo, chill, son, chill. Come on, you ain't gonna die, son. I'm like, I don't know, son. My heart, son, this shit had my shit. This shit had my shit paranoid. I thought my motherfucking heart was just gonna, this shit had me so paranoid, son, I thought my heart was just gonna stop beating in the middle of my sleep. I said, son, I gotta go to the hospital, son. I gotta go to the hospital, son. My shit crazy. So, nigga, we took a cab to the fucking hospital. We took a cab to the hospital. I went, got checked out. The niggas doing EKGs on me, all type of crazy shit. They don't know what. They don't know what to tell me. They like, yo, uh, we don't know, man. We not really seeing nothing. I'm like, yo, I'm telling you, my shit just going crazy in my sleep, beating all type of ways. It got You gotta find something in my shit. They like, we don't see nothing. I'm like, yo, bro, listen. This shit right here is crazy, my nigga. So I started Googling shit. Like, yo, I gotta find out what the fuck is wrong with me. Bro, from the heart palpitations, a nigga started getting vertigo, my nigga. You heard, if you don't know what vertigo is, look that shit up. I started getting vertigo, my nigga, where the whole room would just start spinning. If I stand up, if I just stand up regular like this, too fast, the whole room would just start spinning like this, my nigga. You heard why you standing still. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, yo, the room is spinning, the world is spinning. You heard? Bruh, nigga was scared, my nigga. I was scared, you feel what I'm saying? When that vertical started hitting, I started, so I started Googling the shit out that shit. Yo, how to stop vertical, how to stop vertical. And you know how them bullshit ass spam sites be coming up? Yo, the key to unlocking vertigo secrets right here, 299. You be like, what the fuck is this? And it be a little downloadable PD PDF or something. And you think it's a scam? I was so desperate. I was paying for scam sites and everything. How do you stop vertigo? And I found one site that says some shit. It said if I paid like $3 and that shit downloaded as a PDF. And I started reading it and that shit said, if you suffering from vertigo, drink hot water with cayenne pepper in it, and it'll stop that shit immediately. And I promise you, my nigga, I tried that shit, that shit stopped that shit immediately. I'm like this, but it wasn't, uh, it was temporary. It didn't last forever, my nigga. It lasted for a couple of hours. So I used to have to walk around the house with a hot cup of water with cayenne pepper in it anywhere I'm going because at any moment, the fucking world could start spinning like this, my nigga. You heard? So I'm sipping that shit and that shit goes away while I'm sipping it temporarily. Nigga, I'm having heart palpitations. I got vertigo. My back is locked up. My neck is locked up, bro. I, I kept going back and forth to the hospital. Yo, something's wrong with me. I'm gonna die and y'all ain't doing nothing. So finally, I got the therapy niggas. You know them therapy niggas, them accident ambulance chases pop up on you. They give you cards. Yo, come down to the therapy. So 
I ain't even know nothing about no motherfucking lawsuit, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't. I wasn't even thinking about no lawsuit at the time. By the time them symptoms started kicking in, I'm like, nigga, I'm suing the shit out these niggas. So I started pursuing that shit, going to motherfucking therapy and all of that crazy shit. But bro, I was fucked up. I was fucked up. You understand what I'm saying? I couldn't do shit, my nigga. I couldn't do shit out here. So one time, this is my word. You know, after the symptoms, I had the symptoms for like a month, right? I started thinking that, I and I'm strong enough to, you know, go to the store and shit like that. So I came to the fucking Av to go to the supermarket. The supermarket on this block. Hold on, I'm going to show y'all niggas the exact supermarket. So I went to the supermarket. You heard this fine fair right here. I don't know if it was a fine fair at the time. I don't remember. You heard, but I went to that supermarket. Right? To go get some groceries. Nigga, I get two bags of groceries. I'm thinking my shit type healed up. Bro, I get the groceries. I try to walk down this block. By the time I got to the corner of the block, I got two bags. Bro, that bags was so heavy, that shit just triggered my symptoms. And I'm holding the bags, and all of a sudden, the motherfucking world started spinning again like this. And I'm standing here, this is the first time I'm coming outside by myself that far away from the crib. The world starts spinning. I call a nigga OP, yo son, come get me, son. He like, yo, what happened? I'm like, yo, I'm over here by the McDonald's. I just came from the supermarket. That vertigo shit is happening again, my nigga. The whole world is spinning, son. Come get me, son. That nigga had to come up to the Ave and get me and walk with me back to the crib. I'm like, yo. I got to get to my cayenne pepper and my water. Son, a nigga was fucked up. Then I found out while I was hurt and having these symptoms, I couldn't smoke no weed. Because anytime I smoked weed, that shit was giving me symptoms times five. Let me tell you, I didn't want to stop smoking weed. So I was looking for any way I could continue to smoke. You know, I ain't know nothing about edibles or how to make edibles at that time. I might have even tried and they just came out trash because I ain't know what I was doing. You heard? So I'm like, yo, I can't fucking smoke no more. I said, I'm going to try making some weed tea. You heard? I heard somebody told me that, yo, you could, you could put weed in tea and drink that shit and that shit get you high as a motherfucker. And I was like, eh. At this point, I was desperate. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try that shit. I got some weed. I said, I'm gonna make this tea because I can't smoke. So maybe if I drink it, you know, I could stop smoking altogether if this tea get me nice. So me and, me and the bro opium, we get to brewing up some tea one night, right? So we start motherfucking brewing up the tea. You feel me? Opium was... Opium is a lot younger than me. So check it, right? So I brew up the tea. I make a big ass batch of tea. You feel me? I'm like, yo, we gonna try this shit, my nigga. I heard this shit get you right. You heard we sitting down, we sipping the tea. Pour son a little cup. Pour myself a little cup. Sipping the shit, sipping the shit. I'm like, I don't feel nothing, my nigga. Niggas like, yo, you know, shit got to set in, my nigga. This shit ain't smoking weed, you feel me? Got to let that shit set in your system. Yo, you right, you right, you right. So we sipping the tea, sipping the tea, sipping the tea. I ain't feeling shit, my nigga. Hour go by, I ain't feeling shit, my nigga. Two hours go by, I ain't feeling nothing. I'm like, yo, that tea shit is whack, bro. Yo, I had forgot to mention that I had guzzled the whole rest of the tea down, both of us. You heard this shit is whack. I can't smoke. I can't get right. I can't find nothing to get right off of. You feel what I'm saying? Bro, my shit went in the room. I said, yo, son, I'm calling it a night, my nigga. You heard me going to sleep, my nigga. I see you in the morning. You heard I go in the bedroom, start trying to doze off, lay down, start trying to doze off. Next thing you know, I wake up out my sleep, 
I fall asleep for a couple of hours. You feel me? I wake up. It's probably like two in the morning. I'm like, I wake up. I'm like, I'm hiding the motherfucker. I'm like, yo, my nigga. Nah. I'm like, yo, I am high as a motherfucker, my nigga. My head is buzzing. My whole, every time I speak, my whole body is vibrating. I'm like, son, I go into the motherfucking live room. I'm like, I gotta go wake this nigga up. I go in the live room, this nigga Ope sitting in front of the TV like this. I say, yo, son, yo, son, he like, yo, son, I think I'm higher than a motherfucker, son. I say, yo, bro, I'm stupid high, bro. I said, this fucking shit took three, four hours to kick in. Now it kicked in. My shit twisted. You heard? Bro, I'm so twisted. It's not a good twisted. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm too high. I'm too high. I said, yo, we gotta, we gotta bring this high down. He like, yo, I was trying to go to sleep for like three hours. My eyes just stayed open. I said, yo. I said, yo, bro, listen. We gotta bring this high down. We gotta bring this high down, my nigga. Yo, bro. Niggas went to the store. Niggas got chips, candy, cold water, soda, milk, orange juice. My shit was trying everything, nigga. My shit ate some chips, some soda. That shit ain't work, my nigga. Orange juice, milk, shit ain't work, my nigga. I'm like, yo, usually when I eat something, high is gone, nigga. No matter how high I am, if I eat something, that shit just take away my whole high, my nigga. Son, I was trying to eat candy, fucking cold ass Sprite, ice cold Poland Spring, motherfucking anything that was in my crib that I could eat. I'm trying to eat that shit, bread. I'm trying to eat plain bread. Anything that could bring my high down, my nigga. None of that shit was working. None of that shit was working. My whole head was vibrating. I'm like, yo, I never been this high in my life, my nigga. I feel like I should go to the hospital. So the nigga OP like, yo, you sure, son? I said, son, I feel like I need to go to the hospital. Remember, I, I'm injured from this accident. So I still get that vertigo shit. I still get these symptoms. I still get all of that. But at this point, I was trying to find methods to stop being in pain because my shit was fucked up nigga my back my neck o op fucked his knee up he slammed his knee my wife her shit was fucked up she started having crazy back pain where she was crying and all type of shit you feel what i'm saying so it wasn't just me but i was the most fucked up you heard i needed chiropractic help and we'll get to that but um yeah so i'm like yo son i ain't never been this high in my life this shit is giving me heart palpitations like, bro, listen, when you high, everything is intensified. So the whatever pain or whatever was wrong with me, I had real nerve damage. Like I got nerve damage on my elbow where one of my elbows always be black. My daughter be like, daddy, you should put some lotion on your elbow. I'll be like, yo, I got a pinched nerve from that car accident where that shit like killed all of the nerves in my elbow. And the shit is dark as fuck. You feel me? So I had actual nerve damage from this shit. And the weed was just intensifying it. So now I done drink this motherfucking weed tea. This shit got me twisted. Next level twisted. I'm like, son, I gotta go to the hospital, son. I gotta go to the hospital, son. You feel me? So we go to the fucking hospital. I forgot which hospital we went to and why we went there. I forgot. But well, we went to an awkward hospital this time. It was somewhere, I think, matter of fact, we called a cab to go to a certain hospital, and this nigga took us to the, to the wrong hospital. So now we all the way in, in Harlem at a hospital or, or up in Manhattan at a hospital instead of a right around the way. You feel me? Bro, I go, to, I go to the hospital. I come up to the emergency, the emergency room clerk. I'm like, yo, yo, I had a car accident. 15 days ago 16 days ago and now the shit is starting to kill me i drank some weed tea and that shit just got me feeling crazy like i'm gonna die yo son i really thought i was gonna die my nigga 
the way I was feeling off this motherfucking weed tea, bro, this shit had me so twisted. I was like, yo, I don't think I'm gonna make it, my nigga. I don't think I'm gonna make it. I gotta go to a motherfucking hospital. I went to the hospital. I was like, yo, y'all gotta do something. They was like, you know, they wasn't taking me seriously. They think, oh, here come another OD nigga or something. I said, yo, look, seriously, man. I'm getting heart palpitations. My heart is beating irregular. I need some real help. I need to see a doctor. Please, please don't do this. Don't make me, don't let me die in this emergency room. My shit getting dumb dramatic. I'm like, I'm going to die in this emergency. If y'all don't get me to a doctor and test my vitals, I'm going to drop dead in this motherfucking emergency room. I'm telling you, this is how I'm feeling. And I was dead ass. That's how I really was feeling. Because that weed tea, remember, you know, whatever symptoms I got from the car accident, the weed made it five times more. This weed tea made it 30 times more, my nigga. I'm like this, yo, son, yo, if I die, tell my moms, tell Cheryl Lynn, tell, yo, I was saying all type of shit, my nigga. Tell Floof, I said, yo, all t I was wilding. You feel me? So, them niggas put me on a gurney. They like, all right, come back here. Them niggas put me on a gurney and shit. Now I mean, started taking my blood pressure and all of that crazy shit, laying me down. And I'm like, yo, as I'm laying down, they giving me water and shit. I'm starting to feel slightly better a little bit. After about two, three hours laying up in the motherfucking bed in the gurney in the emergency room, that nigga OP is in the, in the waiting room with my phone and shit. You feel me? Cause I'm going to sleep. Oh, matter of fact, my baby mother had called me and was like, yo, I'm getting contractions. And they did some, this amount of minutes apart. I said, yo, go to the hospital. I said, I'm in the hospital right now. Go to the hospital. Cause she had had a couple of false alarms. So I said, yo, go to the hospital and see if it's official. If it's official, call me. But I'm in the emergency room right now cause I'm having a crazy irregular heartbeat. I'll explain it to you later. So. And at the time, like I said, we were slightly beefing because she found out that I was with another chick in a car accident. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, my shit in the motherfucking hospital, the nigga OP is in the motherfucking waiting room with my jack. That nigga just comes back there. I'm laid out on the gurney. Like, please don't let me die. That nigga come down. He comes back there. He like, yo, son, Floof just hit and said she's going into labor. She's having the baby for real. They taking her in, you feel me? So I'm like, what? My shit on, soon as he said that shit, I just sobered up like this. What? Like, yeah, son, she gonna have a baby. I said, I got, to, I got to get uptown. I got to get to the Bronx. The nurse is like, yo, you can't leave now. We just did tests, we gotta see. I said, I said, listen, I got a daughter that's about, I got a kid that's about to be born because I don't do the gender reveal thing. I just let it rock. I said, I got a kid that's about to be born. My baby mother just went into labor. I gotta leave. So he was like, at least wait to see you speak to the doctor, this and that. I said, I can't even take that chance. I might miss my daughter's, I might miss my child's birth. Bro, niggas had IVs, whatever the fuck they had in me. I took that shit out like this. I said, yo, I'm out. That shit sobered me up instantly, my nigga. It wasn't no vertigo, no nothing. All I could think about was my kid being born. You feel me? My shit hopped up out that shit, nigga. I went to the motherfucking hospital. And my baby moms was laid up. She was in there talking about she gonna do a natural birth. She ain't messing with no epidural, none of that shit. Man, that motherfucking pain hit. That pain, that real labor pain hit her shit. Boom! She was like... Should I take the shot? I said, yo, listen, take the shot, bruh. If you're going to be all in pain and about, and I don't like that unnatural shit either, but I ain't want to see her the way she was looking. You know, I ain't never had a baby, but I heard that shit ain't no joke. You feel what I'm saying? So the pain that was in her eyes, she was like, she was trying to stick to her word, not fucking with it. I said, listen, man, sometimes... Sometimes the natural shit don't always work out, nigga. You got to go with the chems. You heard? I'm a natural, loving, organic, loving nigga too. But when it get hectic sometimes, a nigga got to go with the chems, my nigga. 
Everything gotta go with the chemicals, man. You heard? When my daughters be sick and shit, my kids be sick, I be trying to do the natural shit, but I be like, listen, man, I can't hear you coughing like that. You gonna have to take some tussle or something. You heard? But yeah, my G's. So soon as they hit her with that shot, within 10 seconds, my daughter was out, my nigga. We ain't even need the shit. Soon as that shit hit her muscles, my daughter just came out. Bloop! One second. I said, damn. I was happy as hell. That's when my daughter, Afeni, was born. She 15 years old now. You heard? Damn near about to go to college. These kids grow up fast, and life happens fast, baby. You heard? So enjoy it while you're here. Because life happens fast. But yeah, bro, that weed tea had me twisted. But then after the weed tea incident, I realized I couldn't fuck with no weed at all. And I just cold turkey weed and stopped fucking with it. And I started working back out. And now I start turning into a workout, a workout workoutaholic. And now I'm judging everybody else in the team that smoke weed, the nigga Bucker, the nigga OP, the nigga Sid, Soldier, everybody around me is getting judged. I'm like, Shh. I, I'm, I'm letting niggas come to my crib. Niggas hitting me with the black lock. She already had locked the joint. She looked at me and she hit that shit again. Arrgh. But like, yo, on some G shit, they always got some crazy crashed up cars around here. This is how our shit was looking too after that accident. That's a fact. His shit was worse. You heard? But like, yeah. But, um. But yeah, so I started judging the shit out of niggas. Now, I mean, niggas be coming to the crib. You know, I was fucked up. I was still. And then not only was, not only was I still fucked up, that shit had me mad cranky. When you, when you got into a mad car accident and you healing from that shit, you be mad cranky. And when you stop smoking weed after smoking weed for years, that shit be having you extra cranky. You feel what I'm saying? So I was extra, extra cranky and just annoying. You feel me? Remember how Dave Chappelle was at Half Baked when he stopped smoking weed? Like, get the fuck away from me, nigga. Why the fuck you ain't tell me? That's how the fuck I was. I was on edge, nigga. You heard? I was on edge without that Tron. So, I used to be judging the shit out of niggas. Yo, come on, man. Niggas be coming to my crib. Niggas rolling up an L. Like, Yo, come on, man. I drug addict ass niggas, man. Come on, man. That's all the fuck y'all niggas do. That's all the fuck y'all niggas do is smoke weed, man. Damn, nigga. That's all you want out of life, nigga. Drugs. That's what the motherfucking white man wants you to do, nigga. Get high all motherfucking day, nigga. Get your motherfucking life together, nigga. Do something with yourself, nigga. Start working out, nigga. You heard? This is a nigga who smoked weed for 90 years straight. And the first month I'm off that shit, I'm judging the shit out of niggas. I'm like, word the mother, man. Y'all niggas is like dope fiends and crackheads. I'm going to start just calling y'all niggas crackheads. That's my word, son. Every time niggas rolled up another L, I'm like, here go the crackheads. Here go the crackheads smoking another motherfucking blunt. You heard? I was getting on niggas nerves. Niggas like, yo, come on, son. You just finished smoking. I'm like, yo. Niggas like, yo, son, you was smoking last week. I'm like, yeah, nigga. But now I got clarity, nigga. You feel what I'm saying? That shit is crackhead shit, nigga. Y'all niggas is on some, y'all niggas is crackheads. You heard? I was a foul motherfucker. But I had to stop smoking weed, literally. I had to stop smoking weed. For literally two years I had to stop smoking weed For literally two years So for like two whole years I ain't smoked no dang And I started working out You heard? And this was this was like Now I started working out Maybe a year after the, after the accident Because I couldn't work out shit I couldn't do a push up I couldn't do a pull up Calisthenics was a wrap Weights I could mess with a little bit Once I started healing up but matter of fact, even the working out shit is later on down the line. I was still, I was still fucked up. I stopped smoking the weed and I was still fucked up and I was still having all type of symptoms. So I started to seek a chiropractor, a real chiropractor. I had medical coverage, 
Not mean, because when you, not mean, whatever accident I had, whatever lawyer I was fucking with, they had some medical coverage where I could go to whatever motherfucking doctor I wanted to go to. So I, I called up a motherfucking chiropractor on 80, 89th Street. You heard? Something 86, 89th Street, something like that. And I'm like, yo, man, because I, matter of fact, this is what happened. I was trying to find out what the fuck was wrong with me. Because I was still having vertigo and all of that crazy shit, right? So I went to go see some doctor. I go to the doctor to see, they, they let me see some bra, some white chick. She comes out. She like, hey, how you doing? She looking mad weird in the face. I'm like, yo, listen, man, I keep having vertigo. The whole world be spinning. You know what I mean? And shit got me stressed. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't, I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody can't diagnose the problem. I'm telling her all of this shit, right? She just looking at me with a crazy, weird smile. I'm like, yo, what's wrong with this chick? She like, um, I think what you're experiencing is just a bunch of anxiety and depression from the accident. You know, accidents are followed up by depression. I was like, yo, yeah, I know that shit was, I was a little depressed after the accident. I said, but that shit ain't got nothing to do with the world spinning and shit. Now I mean the world is spinning, nigga. I've got something is wrong with me. Like, I wanna know what the fuck is wrong with me. I need to be diagnosed. This is why I'm trying to come see a private motherfucking doctor. You understand what I'm saying? So I could be diagnosed the correct way. The broad, like, yo, if you want my personal, if you want my professional opinion, I think you should uh go on antidepressants. So I'm like, I, I ain't never take no antidepressants. I'm not depressed like that, bro. I'm not depressed. I'm just motherfucking fucked up. I got a back injury and a neck injury. She's like, yeah, but I, st I still think. Lazarus. She's like, I still think it's, I still think it's anxiety and depression. I think you should take the antidepressants. So she gives me the antidepressants. I go back home. And I motherfucking Google the antidepressants she gave me. I forgot which ones it was. You know what I mean? I, I Googled that shit. First thing that came up was suicide, suicide, suicide. You stop taking them shits, nigga, you become suicidal. I said, why the fuck would this broad give me these shits? I said, why the fuck would this broad give me these shits when I'm telling her I'm having physical heart palpitations and all type of shit? What it was was her ass was on them antidepressants. That's why she had that weird ass smile like this. Hey, nah, them antidepressants had her ass smiling like that. So I threw them shits in the motherfucking garbage. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't fuck with them shits. And I was back to motherfucking square one on trying to find out what the hell was wrong with me and how can I get rid of this vertigo and these symptoms. So I found this chiropractor nigga on 86th street, right? I'm like, yo, my G. Matter of fact, son name was son name was Dr. Ichi, right? So I call him up. I'm like, yo, man, I'm looking for a doctor, man. They're trying to give me antidepressants. Nobody could diagnose me, man. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my back fixed. I'm fucked up. So he like, yo, calm down. Calm down. You, you called the right number. Come to the spot. So I comes down to the spot. So he like, yo, what happened? This and that. I'm explaining to him the car accident. He looking at my medical report. He like, oh, you got a C5 out of place with a 4.6 and a VO5 and whatever the fuck was wrong with my back. He said, I could help you with that. I could, I could help you with that. So he was like, what's, like, what's your symptom? So I was telling him at the time, like the top, like, bro, when I hit, when we got into the car accident, I hit my head on top of the ceiling of the car and it pushed my spine down. So my spine was compressed. This is a real thing. It's called spine compression. It happens in car accidents. So my spine was compressed, smashed down on my nerves. So he had this machine called the spine decompressor where you sit up in that shit and there's a helmet and it pulls your spine up and slowly um, decompresses your spine. But it takes, you know, weeks and weeks of doing this shit. So he like, yeah, I told him, I said, this is what it is. Every time somebody touch, if I touch the top of my head, even slightly like this, I get crazy symptoms. You feel me? I'm like, even if I touch the top of my head for one second, I'm getting heart palpitations, vertigo and all that. He said, yeah, your spine is compressed. You gotta go into the, uh, you gotta go on the spine decompressor. So I started, 
coming to the dude office and getting on that, that spine decompressor. And when I got on that shit, that shit had me feeling like a million bucks, my nigga. I'm like, yes, this is the problem. This is what it is. My spine was compressed. So every time I get now, I'm sitting in a chair. That shit puts shit dumb scary, though, my nigga. You sit up in the chair, you put a helmet on, and that shit just starts pulling your neck up. You like this, ah. You feel like that shit feel like it's just going to snap your whole neck off like this. Prop! You feel what I'm saying? So you just got to sit there and tell them, yo, listen, don't put that shit up too high. Because if you put it up high, that shit be ripping your head off. You feel what I'm saying? So I start off low and then I go up. He's like, yo, the dial is right here. So, you know, start off low and then you go up. And I started, eventually I started going up on that shit like, yeah, nigga, pop this shit out. Pause. But, um, that spine decompressor that that bro had, that shit was a game changer. And that's what started getting me in the right track. You feel what I'm saying? We're healing up. Cause it literally took like four years to be completely healed where I'm not every day feeling some crazy shit from that accident. It took years, my nigga. And that's a fact. It was no fun. But that spine decompressor, that shit was doing what it doing. Then you know some would, after the spine decompressor, some would snap my shit up and it got to a point where I was addicted to that shit, nigga. You heard? Nigga, a grown, nigga, a whole grown thug. Nigga, a whole grown ass thug. Nigga, calling me, yo, yo, Dr. Ichi, you in today? All right, I'm coming through to get snapped up. You heard, nigga, a whole grown ass man. You coming, through. nigga, a whole, nigga, done been, nigga, came off of Rikers Island six months ago. Nigga, like this, yo. Yo, man, can you lay me down and, you know, put my arm behind my back like you do so well that should be an intimate relationship but anyway that nigga used to be popping the shit out of my shit pause black 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 snap crack i'd be like damn then it got to a point where i needed that shit nigga you heard i needed that shit i'd be mad call that nigga oh nah i got off I took off today i'm like what I'm like if you want to go see my partner you can go see my partner. I'm like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Ain't, you know, ain't don't nobody snap me like you, nigga. You heard? You know, nigga ain't breaking me up like you. Heavy pause. Heavy pause. You heard? But it's like, yo. So check it. When a nigga had days off, I would go see his partner, right? Now, this is some funny shit. Know what I mean? This nigga partner, not his partner, but somebody he shared the office with who was off, also a chiropractor. Not his partner, but somebody who was, a, who was another chiropractor that shared the office there. So, bro, this nigga, son, this nigga was filthy rich, my nigga. This nigga had invented some device to prevent corp, um, carpal tunnel, tunnel syndrome on your wrist, right? And this nigga had stupid cake and was about to get even more stupid cake, right? So we used to be polying. I mean, we was polying. First, it started with Cairo snapping a nigga up when, when Dr. Ichi wasn't there. But now this nigga, this nigga caked up. We start talking. I start telling the nigga, both of these niggas is Jewish niggas. You heard? I start telling the nigga, ma, yeah, you know, I've been grinding in the rap game, trying to get on, this and that. I was up north. I went to jail. This is my case was this, blah, blah, blah. I started really telling this nigga, Real jewels about my life and shit, right? Nigga, I'm in the hood, broken in the motherfucker. This nigga caked up. Every time I come see that nigga, he be like, yo, man, you're such an inspiration. One time he like, yo, you such an inspiration that I taught a class in college and I used your life story as a story of perseverance to give them inspiration. And I quoted some of your lyrics from Starve the Ghetto. And I told him this and I showed him a clip and he was telling me all this great shit. And I'm like, yo, that's dope. That's dope. He like, yeah, man. And you know, I'm just trying to help you, man. I just want to find a way I can help you, you know, because um, uh, I feel like, I feel like you're really doing something positive and I feel like people need to know your story. Son, this nigga done told me, yeah, they just deposited 3 million in my account last week for this, uh, project that I'm doing with uh, such and such so you know I'm gonna see if I like it 
if I, I, you know, they just sent me half the money now, three million. They got to send me another half when I, I'm like, yo, this nigga telling me about all type of cake, my nigga. Yeah, you know, these people called me last week. You know, they gave me 200,000 to come speak at a lecture over here. Son, this nigga telling me about all type of bread, son. My shit broken, starve. I'm, I'm telling this nigga, I'm like, yeah, I'm living in a basement apartment, hitting my head on the motherfucker, hitting my head on the beams every day. You heard, like, nigga, I'm just waiting for this nigga to be like, listen, man, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you 50 racks to help you get on your feet, my nigga. This nigga ain't, ne this nigga ain't never mentioned no motherfucking bread. You heard? This nigga, so how's the rap game going? How's the struggle, man? How's everything? You know, yeah, it's crazy out here with the police and people getting killed. And you know, it's terrible how people in the ghetto have to live. And people like you that come from impoverished neighborhood. Son, can I get some fucking money, son? Can I get some money, my nigga? This nigga never in his life said, yo, I'm going to give you some bread, my nigga. Nigga said he taught, taught a whole college. You heard, nigga, use my lyrics to teach a lesson in college and give a speech. You know what I mean, nigga? Son, can I get some bread, son? Nigga ain't give a nigga a red, a red cent. You heard? But that was my nigga, though, my nigga. That was my nigga. But niggas, my shit, like, yo, this nigga crazy, son. I be telling this nigga my shit. My mom's in the projects. My shit in the hood. Niggas having bang outs. You know, I'm ducking shots. I'm dying from a car accident. I'm having pa heart palpitations. You heard? I'm poor. The nigga like, man, you keep, you keep going at you. You don't give up, man. You don't give up. You keep living and you keep striving for your dreams, man. You'll make it one day. Let me go run to the bank so I can move this 700,000 over to my savings account. I'll see you later, right? <laughs> oh, shit. That shit was funnier than a motherfucker, my nigga. You heard? That was my life, though. That was my life. But the accident had me fucked up. That shit had me fucked up. Then, them niggas cut off my motherfucking, my insurance, right? So I went to go see this nigga one day to get popped up. Nigga like this, yo man. After this pop session, you know, they 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 yeah, it's, yeah um your yeah, account is up, like your yeah, your yeah, insurance is up. The insurance was only for six months or for a year or for whatever the fuck time I was going there. So I said, so what happens after that? He like, oh you know, I said you well, so you can't see me no more. I felt like a motherfucking broad that was getting dumped. I'm like, so what you saying, my bro? So you saying that you can't see me no more? You can't help me? I can't get on the spine decompressor no more? He like, yo, I mean, you know, you could come here and, you know, I might be able to work out a deal with you. You know what I mean? I'm like, what, like what? Like what type of, you know, how much? Like, you know, show me some love because I really need this. He like, you know, I might be able, you know, I might be able to do 600 a session for you. <laughs> Nigga, like, I might be able to, you know, instead of the normal 800, I might be able to do 600 a session for you. I was like, you know what, brother? I'm about to start learning how to crack my back on the side of the couch like I do to this day. You heard? But that nigga used to crack my shit so right, I be thinking about that nigga to this day. Damn, I wonder what, I wonder what Dr. Ichi's doing right now, man. Damn. You heard? Because my shit still fucked up from that accident. Well, a nigga told me one time, a dude that I know, man, shout out to bro Kennedy from, from Yonkers. I said, yo, bro, he was in a bad one. I said, yo, bro, when does this shit stop? These symptoms from these car accidents? He said, never, my nigga. Never. And he was right, bro, because this shit, I still get symptoms of this shit. I mean, it's just nowhere near as bad as it was because it was fucking bad. It was popping up on 89th Street, just looking in the window at the chiropractor spotlight. You know what I mean? I was just popping up. I just happened to be in the neighborhood. Yo, Dr. Ichi, what's up, man? Yo, what's good, man? I just, yeah, I just happened to be at the bagel shop over there, man. How you doing, man? How, I'm, he like, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, man. How you? I'm all right, man. You know, back a little fucked up still, neck a little fucked up, man. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm surviving, man. You know, how's the kids? How's everything? I said, just trying to get a, uh, uh, just trying to get a charity snap, nigga. 
You want to come in there and you let me snap you up for old time's sake? Nigga, ain't do none of that. Nigga, like, all right, man, have a good one. I'll see you. All right, man, stay in touch. <laughs> My shit was popping up on that nigga. Nigga, come out for lunch. Hey, yo, hey, Dr. Ichi, what's up, man? He's like, hey, what's up? You work around here now? Nah, you know. One of my favorite uh, pizza shops is down the block. Uh, listen, bro. How you used to do that shit? You used to take my arm and then you put my leg. Just show me how to do the shit, nigga. Damn, you can't show me how to do the shit? Another thing I remember from being out in, in, in Drogs Neck, you know, I remember the homie Lils from Dykeman. They gave her a lot of time, but um, she had a lot of beef and she was getting a lot of bread. And um, I think at the time, she might have not been on the run, but she was laying low from a lot of shit that was going down. And so was we, you feel what I'm saying? We was all laying low. I bumped into her shit. And she saw me, I was like, yo, what up? She was like, yo, what up? And the look in her eyes was like, I hope this nigga don't blow it up where I'm laying low at right now. And I ain't say shit to nobody. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't say shit to nobody. A year later or whatever, she was locked up for whatever she was locked up for. But I remember seeing her out here and remember that look she gave me. And I know she probably said to herself, this nigga ain't never blow it up. You feel me? Cause you know how the hood told me, like, yo, I heard the, the nigga last said he seen you out and all. Nah, my nigga, I don't do none of that. I know it was hot. I see a nigga in his low spot. That's his low spot. I ain't gonna say nothing. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah, man, that car accident shit was crazy. He was out here in Throg's Neck. I remember some other shit happened. This nigga OP started fucking with a chick in Throg's Neck Projects. You heard, and the chick was tight wild. One day, matter of fact, he started staying with the broad. He started staying with the broad for a hot minute, right? He starts staying with the broad for a hot minute because, you know, nigga don't want to live up amongst a nigga with his broad. Nigga, nigga get his own broad. So, son, and I, you know, I was encouraging that. Like, nigga, you know what I mean? Find you a motherfucking broad and get up in that crib. And that's what he did. That nigga found him a chick and, and was and was living up in Drog's Neck with some chick, right? So, son found a chick. He's staying in Drog's Neck Projects. These, these niggas old young. You know what I'm saying? So, one day I come home from motherfucking, this is before he was living with the chick, matter of fact, when he was just messing with the chick. One day I come home from getting off the bus or whatever, soon as I step on my block, I see five or six young niggas on my block. You heard? So I'm like, so you know the first thing I think is hammers, my nigga, like, niggas gotta have hammers, like, so them niggas see me, they like, yo, I, I, I ain't even realize them niggas was like laying out in front of my motherfucking crib. You feel what I'm saying? So, Cause they was walking down the block when I came on the block, but I, I didn't know they had been sitting in front of my crib looking for the nigga OP over some chicken drugs now. So OP was wherever he was at. I was coming from Midtown. So I see the young niggas, I'm like, so they come up to me, they like, yo, where your man at? Where your man at? So I was like, what? I said, I don't know what the fuck you talking about, my nigga. He was like, your man messing with my girl. That man messing with my girl. So I'm like, I know how the nigga OP get it in with the hands, you feel me? So the little nigga is like, yo, where your man at? Where your man at? So I'm like, where my man at? I'm like, yo, my nigga, what you talking about? He like, yo, I nigga, I said, yo, bro, don't approach me over no motherfucking broad, my nigga. I said, I don't know what the fuck you talking about, my nigga, but don't approach me over no broad. So they mad deep, but they little niggas. I really, they, I really wasn't giving a fuck at the time. You heard? So I said, man, I don't even know who the fuck you talking about, my nigga. I know you're not in front of my motherfucking door with that shit. You understand what I'm saying? So as I was saying that, the nigga OP was coming down the block. Like I said, I'm looking at this little nigga. I'm like, cause he talking about, yeah, I want to fight your man a fair one. I want to fight your man a fair one. You know, I ain't letting nobody jump nobody. These is little niggas. So you understand what I'm saying? I look crazy jumping a little nigga. So this nigga told me, yeah, I want to fight your man a fair one. He didn't really know who OP was. And I don't even think he had seen OP. He just heard that she was fucking with some nigga from over there. So he came over there looking for the nigga OP. He like, yo, where your man at? Where your man at? And I want the fair one. So I was like, in my head, I'm like, you don't want the fair one with my man, son. You feel me? They wasn't talking, though. You know, he had a bunch of niggas with him. 
Them niggas wasn't really saying nothing. He was like, yo, I want to fight your man. I want to fight your man. So I was like, first of all, my nigga, you want to fight over a fucking broad? But then in my head, I'm like, son, my man will wash you. Like, he didn't know my son. Son was a little frail. And I said, son, son will wash you, my nigga. So as I was thinking that, the nigga OP is coming down the block. He got bags. Like, he coming from the supermarket or whatever. You feel what I'm saying? So he sees the niggas. So I'm like, yo, here go my man right here, my nigga. I'm like, here go my man right here. Real talk. So the nigga OP come down the block. He like, what? So I'm like, yo, what's up with these niggas? First of all, I'm going to keep it real. I was tight that niggas was bringing this type of drama to my crib. I'm like, I don't know what type of chick you fucking with, my nigga. But she's troublesome. Because she got niggas popping up at my motherfucking, at my, at my, at my rest. So I was kind of tight with son too. You feel me? But that's still my man. So I'm not going to motherfucking um, do nothing but be on his side. So I'm like, yo, here go my man right now, my nigga. And like I said in my head, I'm like, son, my man will wash you, my nigga. You do not want to fight, son. Trust me. So son came through. He like, yo, you fucking with such and such. So my man like, yeah, I'm fucking with him. What's up? What you want to do? You feel what I'm saying? That nigga ain't really want to fight. He talks some shit. Yeah, nigga. If I see you over there, I'm telling you going to get it. Blah, blah, blah. That nigga ain't want to fight. That nigga spent off. So I ended up moving in, moving in with the chicken shit like that and staying in Throg's neck. You heard? We done been around this motherfucking city, my nigga. We done been around this city. We went through all type of shit. But um, that was another thing that happened at motherfucking Throg's neck. That was another thing that happened, nigga. So then when I went in the crib, my baby moms told me, she was like, yeah, it was. they were sitting on the stoop. I said, they were sitting on the stoop. I said, are you serious? She was like, yeah, because I didn't know that. Them niggas was just walking down the block when I came on. She was like, yeah, they were sitting on the front stoop acting like they was waiting for you. So after that, me and the nigga OP started running down on any one of them niggas that we saw. You feel what I'm saying? Matter of fact, we caught the nigga, the main nigga. We caught that nigga on the Ave one night by himself, my nigga. And we ran down on that nigga and, and niggas put the fear guard in niggas. We caught that nigga on the ab by itself when he wasn't with a bunch of niggas. And we ran down on that nigga and was like, yo, what's up? Yo, what up, my nigga? You bring, you was sitting on my stoop. I, I ran down on a nigga personally. I said, yo, what up, my nigga? You was sitting on my stoop with niggas the other day? Know what I mean? Because when I saw y'all, y'all was down the block. Then my baby moms told me, y'all niggas was sitting on my motherfucking stoop. You was sitting on my stoop, nigga? Nigga was like, yo, nah, yo, look, man, that shit wasn't about nothing. You feel me? That shit was bullshit, know what I mean? I don't want no problems, this and that and this and that. And I'm like, yo, my nigga, don't ever come to my motherfucking rest again, ever. Yeah, we pressed, we, we, we just pressed the nigga real hard and aggressively, my nigga, on some super gangster shit. You feel me? We seen a nigga, he was dolo. We just ran down on that nigga. Yo, what's up, nigga? What's up? You had niggas on my stoop the other day? What the fuck? That nigga was like, yo, word of mother, yo, yo. You know what I mean? I don't take no pride in that shit because, you feel me, it's black on black bullshit. But I was tight that niggas had niggas sitting on my stoop. So when I seen that nigga, the next time I full court pressed that nigga straight up full court ran down on that nigga might have backed out of some type of uh weapon tree or something like that you feel what i'm saying but um i pressed that nigga full court like nigga if you ever bring some niggas to my motherfucking doorstep again nigga you heard it's gonna be on but um eventually we got cool with the niggas from throg's neck projects son was staying in throg's neck projects and we met niggas out there and niggas started knowing us and we was cool and we was coming in and out of that motherfucker buying weed and all of that and it was all love and the same niggas that niggas had problems with we saw them niggas and it was all love you feel what i'm saying because we was out there for some years after that but um shit was hostile at first you feel what i'm saying but uh yeah man and laz shout out to the whole throgs neck projects you heard Check it, right? The downside of not smoking weed, when you stop smoking, you start eating like a house. You heard? So it's like, bro, I gained dumb weight. I used to be mad frail. I stopped smoking dank. I gained dumb weight. You heard? 
I'm out here like 285. You know, now normally I'd be like 260, fluctuating and the 260 is too much. I need to lose a dub now. But when I, after that accident and I wasn't smoking, I was damn near 280. Wasn't a good look, you heard? Wasn't a good look, bro. One time we was outside, my man had me tight. My man said I was dumb sensitive about my weight because I was mad big and prolic. Then I started working out. First of all, I started working out powerhouse gym. You heard? Um, Melly Mel used to be working out up in there. He was dumb prolic, you feel what I'm saying? But I used to just be up in there. I couldn't really hit no, no, no bar the way I wanted to and do my up north workout because I was twisted off this accident. You heard? So I had to go in there like I was a dude starting from scratch that never worked out before. Had to put up with dudes in the background. You know how you go to the gym and be niggas in the background? Yeah, man, because you know, a lot of niggas can hit weights, but they can't hit that bar. You know what I mean? A lot of niggas, man, they don't even be locking out when they be doing their pull-ups. And when they be curling, they don't even be... Bro, listen, I was working out up north around murderers. You know what I mean? Mind your business, get the fuck away from me. But I had to put up with that dumb shit. You feel what I'm saying? But my shit gained mad weight and I was hitting mad iron. I'm I'm doing up north shit like the long bar pause with 20 on it on each side. I never mess, I never mess with crazy heavy weights, but I mess with those weights that put that get the muscles where they supposed to be. You feel what I'm saying? I'm doing curls with the long bar. My arms was like a nigga leg. You heard? One of my arms was like a nigga leg. Word to mother. One time my man had me tight. My shit man sensitive about my weight. My man said that nigga like, we standing outside, parked up. Now I mean, in front of my building, this is when I was living in on Kruger. Now I mean, and my man is like, yo son, I ain't gonna lie to my nigga. You got mad big. You heard? That nigga was like, son, you got mad big, son. That shit had me tight. My shit dumb, my shit was dumb something like, that's all right though, nigga. That's all right though. I get mad pussy. I get mad pussy while I'm this big though, nigga. Them bitches love this big shit, nigga. You heard? Nigga, you don't get more pussy than me. I may be fat, but you don't get more pussy than me. You heard? We got into a mad argument. I was, I was in the wrong for that, my nigga. I was in the wrong. I was sensitive and you was right. I was getting too motherfucking big and I needed to get my ass do something. I mean, I needed to start smoking again or something. But yeah, my man had me tight. And he was like, shunt, you got mad big, son. I'm like, I'm like this hike though, nigga. I'm a big fly nigga though, nigga. Fuck is you talking about, nigga? Bitches love this big nigga though. Bitches love this fat nigga. You heard I was mad. Yeah, my G. But yeah, man, that car accident had me twisted for a while. Twisted, you know what I mean? After a while, like I said, when I started working back out, after a couple of years, I started regaining a lot of my strength back. You feel what I'm saying? Then, you know, my bro Venom. My bro Venom from Harlem. I'm sitting around complaining about my accident all the time. My bro Venom from Harlem, that was basically our main producer that was supplying us with all the beats. You feel me? Son get into a car accident of his own. And his car accident that he got into was 10 times worse than the car accident I was in. And he lost his man. His man died in the car accident. Rest in peace. You heard they hit like a medium or something doing like 100 miles per hour. And Venom got real hurt in that accident. And I mean, next level hurt. You feel me? So when I spoke to Venom and he was telling me how much pain he was in and how he was in so much pain, he was wishing he was dead sometimes. He like, fuck it, just let me die. That's how much pain he was in from that accident. You feel what I'm saying? Because he got real fucked up in the accident. And Venom pulled through that shit. It took him a long time, but he pulled through that shit. And when I heard about his accident, I stopped complaining about my accident so much because ain't nobody lose their life in my shit 
and you know his shit was a lot worse so you know shout out to my bro venom love you my nigga but you know that sobered me up and made me say i just gotta stop complaining about this shit and get my strength back but that shit was hell bro i mean back back injuries neck injuries that shit ain't no fun at all my nigga you heard real talk and when that lawsuit settled for that shit because i didn't go straight to the motherfucking um emergency room when it happened i got jerked my nigga and i only got a few racks real talk i only got a few racks but if i'm not mistaken the racks came at a time where we was about to get evicted or some shit and that shit was just enough money to pay the bills you feel me so everything is written in the book of life but when you ever get into a car accident no matter if you think you not hurt take your ass to the hospital and make that accident report and get checked out because you just don't know you feel what i'm saying and i learned that shit the hard way because i was supposed to get about 100 racks from that lawsuit how fucked up i was you feel what i'm saying but anyway man z man suicide polo with the ski man oh yeah you know that cherokee that we had that shit got totaled so my wife got a check remember she wasn't my wife at this time she was just my girl but she got a check to get a whole new car you feel what i'm saying and that's going to be the continuation and the next story that i got for y'all is going to be called the explorer and the shit i went through with this explorer is a whole nother movie you heard so stay tuned z-man suicide polo with the ski man get at me